Welcome to Parenting Your Sensitive Child. Parenting a highly sensitive child can feel overwhelming, and all the parenting books in the world can only get you so far if your head and your heart are out of alignment with your child's. I'm your host, Julia McGarry. Let's create a new parenting paradigm. Hey y'all, we are approaching our fall break here in the United States and it felt appropriate to talk a little bit about balanced scheduling. It is so tempting especially if school has been taxing for your child and you've been dealing with after-school meltdowns on a frequent basis, to envision the holidays as a lovely, relaxed time without schedules, a time to reset. Or maybe you fall into the opposite camp. Your holidays are busy and you're looking forward to time spent with extended family, enjoying good food, and kicking off the winter holiday festivities. Either extreme, overscheduling, or underscheduling can lead to days off that are more stressful than they need to be. Kids in general, but especially sensitive kids, need some structure and predictability to feel safe, but they also need downtime to recharge and a sense of autonomy. They need balanced scheduling. Balanced scheduling is a concept that I've come up with that consists of three components. Number one, having a daily rhythm. Number two, being intentional with downtime, scheduling in downtime. And number three, planning fun outings together in advance, but not necessarily every day. Let's take a look at each one. So first up, having a daily rhythm. Do you remember early on in the pandemic when we were all getting used to being home together and there were all those sample schedules floating around on social media? I'm not sure if this was just in my world or if it really was as widespread as it seemed, but the intention was to give families a predictable structure for their days. The problem with this, though, is that Any kid who even has the slightest drive for autonomy is going to push back against a rigid structure as much or more than we as adults want to cling to the structure as a measure of our success as parents. We like to get all the things done, right? (laughs) But our kids want to have a say in their day. And still, they crave some predictability, something to let them know that we're not all just flying by the seat of our pants. This is where a daily rhythm comes in. Thinking of our days in terms of rhythm instead of schedule allows for a lot more flexibility. It allows for our kids to get immersed in their own play without it ruining our plans. And still, there's an order of events that is consistent and predictable every day. It can be really simple. The daily rhythm in our house, for example, consists of getting dressed, fed, and ready for the day before any screens come on. We take regular breaks if we're having a screen-heavy day so we can have a snack and engage in another activity of choice, and we get out of the house every day. Ideally, we go outside, but if the weather's not on our side, we might go to a movie, the climbing gym, trampoline park, or visit grandparents or friends. Then we close out the day with a flexible bedtime routine. We start around the same time every day and it takes as long as it takes. We don't have a hard and fast lights out time. Your rhythm will look different, of course, but you want to consider the parts of your day that you know are consistent. Mornings, evenings, meals and snacks, usually, and Build your rhythm around those. Try not to focus on specific times of day. That can easily create a situation where your child is asking you repeatedly if it's time yet. 
most kids don't have a very nuanced understanding of the passage of time. It's the are we there yet phenomenon. They are very capable, though, when it comes to understanding routines and rhythms. They can get on board with the idea that we eat breakfast, read together, and then have some free time with which they can do what they want so much more easily than having a hard and fast rule that there are no screens until after 10 a.m. As you're considering what your daily rhythm might look like, think about the pieces that translate to school days as well. What is universal about your rhythm? How does it change for the weekends and holidays? And then what can you keep consistent even when the bulk of your day looks completely different? Focus your energy there. Let that be where the rhythm starts and then make adjustments for changes in season, holidays, vacations, that sort of thing. Establishing a daily rhythm really is the key piece of balanced scheduling. If that's the only thing you do after listening to this episode, it's still going to make a big difference for you. But let's say you have an established rhythm, or you at least can envision a rhythm that would work for your family. The second piece of balanced scheduling is planning for downtime. You want to ensure that your child has downtime every day to ground themselves and regroup. When they were younger, this was nap time, right? And a lot of families try to maintain quiet time at a scheduled time every day after nap has gone away. If this is working for you, I love it. It didn't work so well for us, so I want to encourage you to think of downtime more like a buffer. It's something that is a given for transitions between activities. If your child has been at school all day, for example, you ideally want to plan at least 20 minutes for them to do something that recharges them before you ask them to move on to something else. Maybe they sit at a table and have a snack. Maybe they go outside and jump on the trampoline. Or maybe they play with their stuffed animals or read or watch a show. It doesn't have to be screen free time unless screens are a truly dysregulating force for your child. For many kids though, watching a show or playing a little bit of Minecraft helps them decompress and be ready for what's next. It's going to look different for each family and maybe for each child. Something I want you to consider though is that your child deserves a say in how they spend their downtime. If you hear this and think, okay, I'm going to have my child read for 20 minutes as soon as they get home from school, it's not going to work out as well for you as it might if you say, hey, it seems like you might need some time to focus on you after school. What do you think would help you get settled into being at home? And then do your best to honor their insights. And I know I'm using the school-to-home transition here within the context of a discussion about structuring your time over the holidays, but it's such an easy example, and you can apply it to other contexts. You might want to schedule in downtime between the trampoline park and visiting the grandparents, for example, or you might want to say no to activities that make downtime impossible. Say your child has a soccer game at 10 a.m., and a friend's birthday party that starts at 11.30. If birthday parties in general are hard for your child, you might want to ask them to choose the soccer game or the birthday party. Or you might want to leave the soccer game at halftime so they have time to get changed and have a snack before they head into a new group dynamic. Being intentional about providing your child the opportunity for downtime is huge. And that's why it's the second element of balanced scheduling. The third and final piece of this puzzle is being intentional about planning activities in advance. When you're faced with a school holiday, you want to be really intentional about this and include your child in the planning. You can kind of get away with not doing this over the weekend, but when unstructured days start to stack up, it can be unsettling for everyone. 
The simplest way to go about this is to ask your child what they'd like to do over the break, what sort of adventures they'd like to have. You can share your ideas too, but make sure that you do your best to honor their choices. This is especially important if you have family meals and outings planned that are not optional for them. Make sure you balance that with their choice of activities planned in advance. They might want to spend a whole day at home in their pajamas. Make a plan for it, make it an event, and encourage them to choose activities outside of the house as well. If they're having trouble thinking of things, absolutely offer your input. Might they like to go to the zoo, to see a play, over to a friend's house, or for a hike? This is not to say that you have to let them determine the daily schedule for the whole family. Just be intentional about giving them a voice in the decision-making process and try to balance activities that you have selected with activities of their choice. It's even better if you can find activities that you're all really excited about. Now, this last piece may seem like a lot of work, and I want to be sure to address that. I'm definitely not saying that you have to plan out every second of every day, but it's very helpful to know when you wake up what the big thing for the day is. After having homeschooled for two years, I feel pretty confident in saying that the days that I entered into intentionally, meaning I implemented this idea of balanced scheduling and knew what we were going to do ahead of time, those days were always so much smoother than the days that I left completely open. And it was just as much about me as it was about my child. If I don't know where I'm going when I wake up, I feel untethered and restless. And when I'm in that frame of mind, my dynamic with my child is thrown off too. If I take the time to talk to her ahead of time though and decide in advance what we're going to do, what the big thing for the day is, we're both set up for the day from the start. It only takes a few minutes to say, hey, I need to go grocery shopping tomorrow and I need you to come with me. Would you want to go to the park beforehand? And it makes a world of difference. We're not talking about Pinterest-worthy crafts here, just your basic plan of action or direction for the day. Spontaneity can seem exciting, but it isn't always a friend to kids who want to know what to expect from their days. I hope this helps you prepare yourself as you head into the upcoming vacations, the upcoming holidays, and I hope you have a wonderful week. I'll talk to you in the next episode. Do you feel like you're parenting 24-7 and you're still not sure your child is getting what they need? Are you ready to stop parenting reactively and start living in partnership with your sensitive child? Are you ready to reclaim time for yourself and time for your dreams? Then you're going to want to explore coaching with me. I help my clients tune out all the noise, better understand their kids, build a parenting strategy that meets their family's specific needs, and do the mindset work necessary to implement that strategy consistently without sacrificing themselves in the process. To get started, just head over to partnerpath.com, click on coaching, and get your free consultation set up. Let's get to know each other.